I want to talk about how much you, you crushed in trial, but right as a trial attorney. But before we do that, so in law school, you won Best Advocate in the National Institute of Trial Advocacy Tournament of Champions. Yes. So you didn't just jump in and like, oh, I'm just going to, these are my people are the words that you said. So yep. tell me what it took to win that. And tell me a little bit about that, about that experience. That experience was fun. That was a, a competition that we were able to go to because we had performed well the year before. Um, and the trial team just sort of became my life in law school. I mean, I really paid very little attention in class. I was mostly working on my direct exams and my closing arguments and my crosses. And I just lived and breathed trial team. Um, and it was a civil case. It was a negligence case. It was a slip and fall that we were you know, going to. Um, and I remember when I won that competition, I was, you know, proud and happy and excited in law school. And then when I applied to the DA's office, you have to go through three interviews. And the second interview, the person interviewing me said, hey, you haven't really talked about how you won this Tournament of Champions national competition. And I just looked at him and I said, yeah, it's not like I, you know, won a million dollar jury verdict or like caught Osama bin Laden, who at the time was still not caught. <laughs> um, and so to me, it was just not an impressive thing because it was in law school. And he just looked at me and shook his head and said, no, when you get in front of Mr. Cooley, you need to make sure that you talk about that. And and so I did. But it, it really what it made me aware of just as like how much I think, and I think women do this especially, right? We downplay our successes and we think they aren't a big deal. And um, really I was sort of like diminishing the importance of that immediately in an interview, which is the exact wrong thing to do. <laughs> and I, I do my research. I was like, oh, that is, that stands out. See, even, you, knew, you knew, I that's didn't know. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. And you know, while you're a deputy district attorney, you tried nearly 60 cases and had a 98% success rate. Very impressive. If you had to distill your success to kind of a few key factors, what made you such a strong trial attorney? Um, I think the nobody's more prepared than I am when I walk into court. I mean, I may not be the smartest one in the room. I may not have all the facts on my side. I may not have the law on my side necessarily. There's always going to be challenges in every case. Um, but I will know my case inside and out, and I will have left no stone unturned. And I took a lot of pride in not just giving victims of crime a voice, but giving a criminal defendant a fair trial and holding the police accountable. I really saw my role in that job as, you know, globally, like much more global, much more about all the pieces of the criminal justice system and not just me getting to win. Um, and so I always believed what I got up and said. You know, I never had to get up and argue something that I didn't think was true. If I didn't think the defendant was guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, then I shouldn't be prosecuting him. And so I really took that job seriously and my ethical obligations seriously. And it's been, it's been really, I feel very grateful to be at a place like I am now at Axe Law, where now I'm in civil and I'm still helping people who have been hurt through no fault of their own, which is sort of my North Star. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I believe in my clients. I get to take cases that you know I feel strongly about and I feel passionate about. And so getting to advocate for somebody who's been hurt through a car accident as opposed to you know, an assault or a, a sexual assault um, in the civil arena feels just as um, satisfying. There's, I can't remember the exact saying, who said it, it's competence builds confidence. Mm. And your preparation and these experiences of the national competition and then your 60 tried 60 cases to very high success rate when you when you switch over to pi where you're like i got this like this is was was there a big transition or was it just hey i'm i'm like what was that transition like because many of our audience a, a large proportion of our audience is pi but there are many criminal attorneys listening to that are considering like, ah, let me, let me maybe try a plaintiff and, and. Well, and a lot of PI does criminal defense sometimes too. Yeah. You know, there's those hybrid firms. Um, you know, switching careers in your forties is very humbling. <laughs> I will not lie. Um, 
I left the DA's office after 15 years. I was a grade four. I had really sort of done all the things in that office, and I could try a gang murder or a rape case in my sleep. And I don't know what I, that means. Uh, I, I'm a non-attorney. What do you mean by the grade? I, oh, a gang. I could try gang. a gang murder or a rape case in my sleep. Like, I knew how to put on those cases. I knew how to put on those trials, you know, very easily. I had done them a million times. And... I was assigned to courthouses where I was seeing the same judges and the same opposing counsel, and I had built a reputation. And to come into civil, an entirely new arena, was it wasn't so much hard to learn the law. I mean, I went to law school. I've been a lawyer for 20 years. You know, like I can figure out the law. Um, but to have to walk in without my reputation and without – the people I know and having to kind of learn a whole new language, um, that was very intimidating and, and very challenging. Um, but I have to say, you know, getting up and doing closing argument, I was in my happy place once again in a civil case, you know, that's where I'm happiest.